Hey, it's me, Javid. Welcome back to our little Skyrim Legendary Edition side spin-off thing with our character Ninwen. Yes, I thought I remembered it wrong. We are playing on the hardest difficulty, which it happens to be legendary. There it is. We're trying to do the stuff that we were not able to do with Grogon's playthrough. Clean that up just to have everything in one night, nice little package. Uh, we are in Ember Shard Mine. We're going to pull that lever and sit here and see what happens. Oh. No, no need. Yeah, you did. No, no, no. You guys are good, man. Yeah, you guys are doing a great job. So, yeah, the reason I'm moving around is because I want to get some sneak. So, how it works is the little eye in the middle, it will slowly open. And when it fully opens, you are fully detected. Oh, come on. I missed the jump. Skyrim jumping is incredibly weird and, and un, uh, unelegant, not elegant, not a fan of, I'm sure anybody that's played this game knows how it feels like trying to jump. There's some weird, how to describe it, it's like if you don't get the right timing with it, you'll just fall. I'm, just, I'm not making much sense here, but hopefully people understand what I mean. Anyways, Hello? you can see it opening and closing, now we're fully detected, so we gotta go into crisis mode. Let's use flames. Hello there. Oh, finally, Destruction shows up to the party. Yeah, Destruction, just like in Grogon's playthrough, is horrendously slow to level up. All that full magic bars, and we finally go from 15 to 16? This is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Okay, let's try to block and retort. I gotta watch out for this guy, because he... For that reason right there, crap. Okay, we're gonna heal. Oh boy, this is scary. Um, I think we should use our magic potions. One, two, three. Okay, and let's use more flames. I think that's kind of going to be our way out of this. Uh, should we just go damaging, I wonder? Could use fury. Forgot about that. Uh, okay, that guy's mid-swing, so we'll have to kill this guy in front of us, I think, right off the bat. Okay, you need to go. Oh, no, 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 no. They're about to, like, one-shot me here. One, two, three. Jeez, Louise, it's so difficult early game. Okay, come on. You gotta go. Jeez, Louise. Okay, dodge that. Nice. Power attacks. Oh, stop dodging, you loser. Block. Okay, ah, uh, man. Let's walk around here real quick. Gonna try to go backwards and loot that guy. Oh. He just died to the collision, I think. That was bizarre. Huh. Seven gold. Uh, let's see. Nothing there. Iron battle axe, which we'll take, I suppose. We looted these guys. That was really weird. I think he died to the rock trap. So they tripped the they, they tripped the trap that we were supposed to be, you know, watching out for. And I think he somehow collided. That's what I was talking about in the first episode, is that you can collide with stuff on the ground, and it will flat out just kill you. And that's kind of what happened to him. So rest in peace, although I kind of wanted to kill him myself so that we could have gotten that experience. Anyways, I digress. There's a lever here to turn that bridge on, to, to activate the bridge. It's not mechanical. It can't be turned on. Uh, also, this is really cool. Check this out. I hope I said this last time, although I can't remember. Uh, Red Apple will just eat. So we have a coin purse and then gold. And then, oh yeah, I always get this confused. I always think this is telekinesis and they give it to you so that you can grab a key off the wall and then like take the key and then use it to open up the gate, which they really need to do more of because that would be so cool. Anyways, no, this is clairvoyance, which if we go to books and look at it, shows the path to the current goal. Of which we're gonna learn. I wonder how that actually works, all things considered, though. Like, programming-wise. Is it... Because it's like a little blue line or something that goes to the thing. I never, ever use it. People have given me crap because I kind of made fun of people for using it uh, way back when. Like, one of my first... Oh, God! I didn't see you there. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. This is a surprise hit me. Thank you. So, we've got the same setup here. But we should be okay. I'm trying to do my worst. Why is it dealing so little damage? I feel like Legendary was harder the first time we played it in Rogon. Also, can we shield bash? Here, hit me. Thank you. Also, why isn't Block gone up? Hit me. Thank you. So let's try to shield bash here. But there we go. Bow. Yeah, we can. Which gives him a little bit of a stun. Okay, now if you hold on one second, sir, I'm gonna ha go ahead and light you on fire. Yeah, that's a great taunt you have. Wow, look at you. You're one taunting, but don't lock me into this. Oh my God, I'm gonna die because of that. God, I, uh, yeah, that's, that's just terrible design. 
absolutely laughably bad design. So it, the game thinks he's gonna die from that spout of flames, but in reality he doesn't. And then I'm locked into the animation just like New Vegas and just like Fallout 3, where you can get killed because of that. Not cool. Okay, we so need like one second of magic here. Yeah, there we go. Okay, no, 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 don't fall over. Iron Sword, Ember Shard, Mine Key, which actually there's a, there's a, uh, something to be said about not taking that key intentionally so that you can get the lock picking experience instead. Uh, which I do, you know, I, I think that's better, but, you know, it's like just keeping the playthrough going, I guess. Okay, let's go back into Sneak. Let's open that. See, we could have gotten lockpicking experience there from that door, but instead it just opens up the mine. It just opens up the door, which is boring. Totally forgot that guy was there, by the way. Okay, it opens up this too. Let's check the sacks. Potatoes. Stick them in a stew. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew? I feel like that quote's wrong. Anyways, point is, we definitely want those potatoes for something. We're gonna eat one lavender, crunch it up in our mouths, delicious. Resist magic discovered from lavender. Oh, and there's the cabbages to make up for the other ones we uh, use stupidly. And then more tomatoes, excellent. There's a reason that's excellent, but we'll talk about it later. Okay, let's open up this big fat chest. Iron Battle Axe of Fatigue. I think that's our first enchanted weapon we found. So enchanted weapons have enchantments, go figure. So in the bottom right, you can see it does five points of stamina damage, which I think is a really bad effect. Cause like, uh, I don't even know if that would be viable. It should remove stamina from like the bandit for instance. And then I guess he can't use power attacks if he doesn't have enough, but how do you know? It's, it's not really that great. 66 gold, four lock picks, petty soul gem, petty. So that's a soul gem filled with a type of soul, uh, which is the maximum for that type of soul gem. Petty soul gem, petty soul is as much as that can be filled with. If it was a grand soul gem, it could be filled up to a grand soul. So we'll take that. And then this is from Saints and Seducers, so pretend it doesn't exist. And then Ring of Minor Magicka increases your Magicka by 20 points, which actually, since we don't have an enchanted ring, we would definitely want to equip. So we're gonna put that on, yeah. Then we have an Iron Great Sword. We have an Iron Warhammer. We're getting very, very heavy here, I think. We're gonna eat a Bleeding Crown, which sounds horrendous. In the sack, we got more potatoes. I'm just gonna eat those three, though. Let's see, sack with nothing, barrel with nothing. We got an Iron Dagger, might as well. Nothing in that sack. Green apples, thank you. Uh, what about there? Carrots, thank you. We're looking for one type of vegetable, which we have not found just yet and I will point it out when we do. And that is it for the little ember shard, uh, sort of uh, uh, little treasure trove. Now, do we still not have any arrows? I would really like to be working on my archery, but I guess we do not. That's quite all right. So when you're playing on legendary difficulty, you have to figure out what is the best way to level up. Uh, like what's, you know, what's the good, what's a good way to put points into, what, what is a good build? What should you be putting points into? What shouldn't you be putting points into? Yada, yada, yada. Anything in this barrel? I guess that's where they sh take a poopy. <laughs> Since I can't say the other thing. Uh, we're going to save here because I feel like this room specifically has a very good chance of killing us. Uh, we're probably really close to leveling up Sneak because like whenever there's an enemy nearby and you're moving around like we are and you're not detected. Ooh, that's close. Ooh, and we're detected. Okay. Uh, it probably is not that much of a surprise. You guys are doing bad things and eventually someone's going to come in here and put a stop to it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Come on. Do something. Do something. Okay, so the other person aggroed up above. Do something. All right. Okay, this is a little scary. This guy's got a shield, so he's going to be blocking a lot. There's a one-handed increase, though. Fantastic. So this is dealing damage to him. It's just not very efficient damage. No, I am not, actually. Okay, let's get some flames onto you. Got crap. Three people are aggroed. That's what I didn't want to have happen. Okay, we're going to try. Oh, just going to say, do not want to get hit by that. Okay, that was a good spout of flames. Ooh, that was almost me getting hit back there. Man, this is tricky. What do I have in my tool belt? You start running so I can stab you in the back. Yeah, that's a very real like thing that can happen. Oh god. Okay, we might have to use like all of our potions here. I've got like nothing else. The problem is like two or three. Yes, two or three on one. That's the issue here. Okay, what do we have? Minor Magicka, not much Magicka left. Let's use two potions of healing, and then let's use... Uh, two Iron Daggers, and then we'll also use a Frostbite Venom. Okay, and hopefully we'll make this happen here. Let's bait out some attacks. Good. Okay, so he's poisoned. You can see the poison draining his health a little bit. No, how am I missing? This is weird. This is weird. Please kill this man. Jeez Louise. 
Okay, now this guy is a lot easier because we can bait out his big attacks. Like so. Crap! Oh my god, he just keeps going. Okay, welcome to the party, Light Armor. We're gonna go ahead and use that level up to get me back to full health. We'll do health again. And do we have another sneak? No, we need 40 more. And then what does this need? 30 sneak and this needs 30. So we need seven more points of sneak before we can put any more perk points up. So now let's do archery instead. Bows do 20% more damage, not bad. Not too shabby. Okay, so that fully heals us, which is fantastic. I'm not gonna waste my magic on this guy. I gotta bait out his attack. Nice one. Bop, 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 bop. Again. Okay, and please stop moving. <sighs> Dagger to the gut cures every malady. This makes no sense what I just said, but hopefully you understand what I'm trying to say. <sighs> okay, that guy's dead. Let's go loot the other guy. Hide shield, steel, war axe, alto wine, gold, and lock picks, and not much else. Now we gotta look at their names to see what level of bandit they are. So that guy, let's do that. So these guys are just your run-of-the-mill bandits. Uh, so when we get to this next room, we definitely want to go back into sneak. I have a feeling the last guy is going to be the boss. Typically in any sort of dungeon in Skyrim, there's like a boss enemy. I mean, that sounds obvious, but you know, they, they have a different name, you know, bandit leader or bandit chieftain or whatever the heck. But it's dependent on where you are, like high, how high leveled you are. It's very weird. Hi there. I'm just gonna sneak behind you if you don't mind. Oh, you've got arrows. Perfect. I'm also gonna be a little loser and save the game because we have invested a lot of time into this. And like I said, I'm on a very, very tight recording schedule today. Oh my God, can we actually do it? No, 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 come on. Let me do it, let me do it, let me do it. Ah, oh, you just had to. Okay, shoot me. So they're just called bandit. Now we're gonna try to use, we're gonna try to use restoration here. Let's block him a little bit, get some more block progress. Well, yeah, we're in a fight to the death right now, man. What did you think this was? Okay, hit me. Thank you. Okay, hit me again. Hit me. I'll bash you if you don't hit me. I will bash you, ma'am. I'm warning you. Thank you. Fun thing. I'm going to bash you anyways. Okay, bop, bop, and... Woo! So that noise right there, the blue... That's clearing this place out. Okay, 15 iron arrows, long bow, gold lockpick, studded armor, fur bracers, which is plus one armor rating, so we'll go ahead and equip that. Fur shoes and an iron dagger. And then just because we have to, we have to drag the bodies into the water. See ya. Have a nice swim. And we're gonna use healing to get some restoration progress. Yeah, there we go. And now we can explore to our heart's content. Oh, I didn't do, well, it's not a big deal. There's a way we could have been a little more efficient with uh, before we were exploring, which I will show you all. And I'm wondering, wondering if there's something that coalesces with it that I shouldn't. I'm not making a lot of sense right now, but I will shortly. So you can use Ember Shard, by the way, to use all this blacksmithing stuff, which we will not, we will not but we will take the iron ingots, which will be useful later. Uh, I think we're done taking run-of-the-mill weapons. They're really not worth much, and they just weigh you down quite a bit. We'll take the iron ore, which can be smelted into iron ingots. And it's weird because it's like a one-to-one -one situation. You would think it'd be like three iron ores turn into one ingot. Uh, we have light armor forging. Now, here's the thing I always do. I always read these when I see them. But what you could actually do is save them, like, write down the location and come back, but, eh, it doesn't really matter, right? Because, like, it's much harder to level up light armor from, like, 99 to 100 than it is from, like, 18 to 19. So, in reality, it'd be good to save this until the very, very end, but it's just, like, such a chore trying to remember all that crap, so I'm just gonna read it. Oh, yeah, smithing. I always, I always think this is light, it's light armor forging, but it's actually a smithing book. So, there are skill books in Skyrim that will level you up just like that bad boy there. Uh, and there are multiples, I feel like five to ten per each skill. So that's like one of the five smithing skill books that you can find, or ten, I don't know how many there are. Uh, and once you read it, it is done for that playthrough. You cannot read it again. Uh, and get more stuff. Okay, so there's that, and then let's go into items, let's go into books. And let's not go into books. What was I trying to do just now? There was something I wanted to do. Oh, ingredients. Yeah, since we're safe now, I'm going to go down. So I'm going to look at the ingredients and look at the top left where it says weakness to fire. And I'm going to go down until for each one that says unknown and eat it. 
so that we know for each one. Like, fly a manchia, bam. Resist fire discovered. And thistle branch, bam. Resist frost. And the reason I waited on that until we killed everything was so that if it was like damage held, for instance, it would destroy us and cause something bad to happen. Okay, so let's explore everything in here. I'm not going to explore the sacks because I don't think we're going to find the one type of vegetable that I'm looking for. Uh, let's take all these. Yoink, 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 yoink. Thank you. Large sack with more tomatoes, sure. Although that those vegetables are weighing us down a bit, I think. Scroll of Bane of the End Dead. So this is the first scroll we found. Basically, uh, they're free magical spells, and sometimes you can use them to cast spells that you can't cast because of your not having the prerequisites. So that's Undead up to level 30 on fire. and makes them flee for 30 seconds. Could definitely come in handy. A Steel Ingot and a Weak Stamina Poison. So poisons obviously do bad things to enemies, whereas potions do good things to you. Uh, let's see. Harvest Rabbit? Sure. Raw Rabbit Leg, and we'll take the Pheasant as well. What do we have on the table? Scanning, scanning, nothing found, nothing found, nothing found, moving on. Okay, so, I see you hidden chest, and I'm gonna go grab, oh, you can do it this way, it looks like. So yeah, there is a hidden chest right here, and Skyrim loves putting hidden, hidden chests everywhere, and you can, by the way, use the pickaxe that we grabbed earlier to harvest this iron, but we're not going to, thank you. Okay, this is an apprentice lock. Oh no, it's a novice lock. I thought it said apprentice for some reason. So we'll pop that sucker open and go yoink yoink. Okay, what is that? Nothing we can interact with, it would seem. Okay, so yeah, Ember Shard's good for just getting you some skills, you know, whatever you're trying to utilize. We're trying to use archery, but we have a severe lack of arrows at the moment, although we will find quite a lot. My Grogon character in the other playthrough, for instance, has like a million of each arrow since I've done like the whole playthrough. I suppose we should sneak, although we did hear the clearing noise. And yeah, that is Ember Shard Mine. Done and done on the hardest difficulty. Man, I have a lot more confidence playing on the hardest difficulty. Now than I previously did. Feels good, man. Okay, so there's Ember Shard done. Now, what we should do... I gotta remember this is not like a full playthrough. I gotta remember not to do everything, because I'm thinking of stuff like, oh, there's other stuff we could do in Riverwood. Ooh. Um, but yeah, this is not a do-everything playthrough, even though my my natural default mode is just like, oh boy, Skyrim again! <gasps> Let's do everything for the hundredth time! But I am trying to think if there's anything major we should do here before we leave. We should at least wait. So here's the wait system. Surprise, there's no tutorial for this. We're gonna wait till noon so that the Riverwood Trader is opened. And we're gonna sell the rest of our stuff since we're about to undertake a big adventure. But I think we want to do something really, really smart first. And I'm going to be happy that we do it so that everybody else that plays this game for the first time or doesn't know this tip will go, Oh, Chief E, thanks so much. And I'll say, you're welcome. Hi. Don't let my sister do anything foolish. I, I'm, I, I'm not your sister's keeper. Trinkets, odds and ends, that sort of thing. Okay. So, Lucan has 655 gold. So, if we're being smart, we want to start with the big stuff so that we have more carry weight. So, Iron Battle Axe, goodbye. Iron Battle Axe and Fatigue, we're going to hold on to and disenchant. Iron Dagger, we're going to sell one. Iron Great Sword, goodbye. Iron Sword, goodbye. Iron War Axe, goodbye. Iron War Hammer, goodbye. Longbow, we keep. Pickaxe, we keep. Steel War Axe, goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Oh, yeah. And also, it increases your speech. I always forget about that. Then we go to Apparel. We're going to sell the Fur Gauntlets. We're going to sell one Hide Shield. And we're going to sell the silver ring. Then we're going to go to potions and get rid of that because that's really not going to do much. Scrolls, we're going to hold on to that. Food, good. We're going to sell that. Uh, and we're going to sell four tomatoes. Because we want ten of cabbage, potato, and tomato. And not more. And we need one other vegetable. We're going to sell these two. And ingredients, we don't want to sell books. We're going to sell light armor foraging which went from 70 value down to 23 because of, our, I think, our speech, but also just, like, everything's, like, halved when it comes to value in Skyrim. And now we can sell the jewels since they weigh the least. So we're going to sell the amethyst, the garnet. Keep that, keep that, keep that. The ruby, and keep that. Beautiful. And then I think we buy his potions because they could really, really, really come in handy. Cure disease, no. Potion of minor healing, yes, yes, yes. Magicka, yes. Stamina, no. Weak poison, no. Weak stamina poison, no. Okay, thank you. All right, then. Okay, then. Bye. Now, anything else to do? I think we make a beeline for the thing that I'm thinking that we should be doing. Yes. 
Yes, because what I was going to say in a previous episode was that you really should go do Bleak Falls Barrow first, which is right up there. Uh, there's a tower, and then to the right is a giant barrow. Because that way you do the claw quest for Lucan Valerius. However, I think we go do something else first to maximize efficiency, especially considering this is going to be a short playthrough, so it doesn't really matter, like, spending, like, time over, you know, spending a lot of time maximizing all of our skills. You know what I mean? So let's save the game... He... Yeah, there. Okay, and for some reason, I'm going to preemptively draw out my flames. I don't know why. I just have a feeling. Oh, my God! We've been set upon by wolves! Or a wolf? Wait, is it really just one? I always thought it was, like, three here. Just one wolf? Okay, where are you at? Now, we could use command, uh... What are you doing, man? Beautiful. Uh, we could just use... What are you doing? The animals are acting so bizarre lately. I swear. Okay, what do you got? Wolf pelt. Do we need wolf pelts for anything? No. I do in The Witcher 1, though, which we were doing on Twitch. And we'll have to return after Maverick's. Which, by the way, go follow my Twitch if you'd like. Uh, we do live streams every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, starting at 12 p.m. Mountain Time every day. Except for Tuesday, start at 2. Although I might move everything to 2 because I'm going to the gym pretty seriously these days. And trying to get the gym stuff done before I do my work. So that I'm very highly motivated to get it done right at the start of the day. But yes, go follow my Twitch. We might still be doing favorites. I have no idea when this episode will go up. But uh, yeah, big event. Annual event, in fact. Okay, so we're going to make a beeline. That, by the way, is White Run, which we've heard a lot about. That is like, you know, once again, the first time you go over the hill in Skyrim and you see that, you're just like, Oh, I'm in love. There's so much content. Skyrim, I think, is genuinely like no joke. Clearly, you know, I'm biased on some level. Pelagia Farm discovered... Oh, yeah, that one quest. Totally forgot. Okay, by the way, these guys are attacking a giant. Uh, we're gonna hit it once. Or a bunch of times. I'm helping! I'm really helping! I wonder if we could speed this up at all. Let's do this. Being very t careful not to damage the people surrounding me, by the way. Hang in there, guys. We're almost there. Gotta make some new friends. Oh my god, their damage is terrible. But at least we're increasing one hand. Okay, make sure not to hit the people, and let's finish it. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Yeah! And that giant is mine, by the way. That's my kill. Unfortunately, this giant has no drops, which is really freaking lame, because honestly, we put a lot of effort into that, but that's okay. Oh, look at him. He's really sad. Right over here, ma'am. I can tell that you're trying to talk to me. Hi, ma'am. Hello. Nice to see ya. Yeah, right over here. Go ahead and take your time. We'll just, uh, we'll be waiting here. How's it going? Hi! You handle yourself well. You could make for a decent shield, sister. I'm so not used to playing female characters, and I was like, wait, what? Shield sister? What is a shield sister? An outsider, eh? Never heard of the companions? An order of warriors. We are brothers and sisters in honor. And we show up to solve problems if the coin is good enough. I think this character is nice that we're playing and curious, not like Flame and Shadow, whose curiosity might lead him into trouble. I think just like nice and like, you know, wants to experience the world of Skyrim. That's, that's the feeling I'm getting uh, anyways now. Can I? And I think she would have an accent, but I'm kind of scared to do it. <laughs> Can I join you? Not for me to say. You'll have to talk to Codlack Whitemane up in Yurvaskar. The old man's got a good sense for people. He can look in your eyes and tell your worth. If you go to him, good luck. Thank you. Speak with the leader of the Companions. So, spoiler alert, the Companions are the Fighters Guild of this game. And yeah, Giants usually have good loot, but unfortunately... Unfortunately... This one just doesn't. Also, look at the Troll Skull there. I just noticed that for the first time. That is a very small Troll Skull. Uh, Skyrim's are really, uh, Giants are really cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can also take stuff from the, uh, farms out here. They don't even mind, I guess. Potatoes, but do they have the thing I'm looking for? Yes! Leek! Perfect. 
So yeah, there is a very powerful... A very powerful food item you can create. And from what I remember, you need cabbage, leeks, potatoes, and tomatoes. I got potatoes, leeks, cabbage, potatoes, tomatoes, but, but, but yeah, you need, uh, you need those four ingredients, and then you can make the Powerpuff Girls, but in actuality, you can make, uh, a very, very strong, uh, a very, very strong, yoink, very, very strong thing, which I don't want to spoil just yet, but you will see later on. For now, let's keep beelining over here. White Run Stables discovered. There is a quest that we want to do, I don't think... I'm trying to remember the timeline of how much time you have to do it. it. It is a timed quest. We did do it with Grogon, though, so I don't have to do it now. I have to remember we're not doing everything. My god. Okay, so wait. Is the carriage here? The carriage is indeed here. Good luck, companions. Have a safe trip. Uh, so, hi, who are you? Need a ride? What do you know about Whiterun? Well, I know the companions make their home here. The mead hall, your Vasker, is the oldest building in the city. Oh. And there's a nasty feud between two families called the Grey Manes and the Battleborns. You'll want to be careful there. The rest you can find out by asking the townsfolk. Start with the barkeep at the Bannered Mare or the Castle Steward. Thank you, Bjorlum. Very helpful. I'd like to hire your carriage. This voice is going to be cringy as usual with every new playthrough. We're, we'll, we'll mold it. Where do you want to go? Where do you want to go? Uh, I would like to go to Markov. Climb and back, and we'll be off. You got it. Fun fact, you can climb and back, and you'll be off. He'll actually Never start talking to, to you. Some say it was built by the dwarves. I don't believe a word of it, though. Why not? It has a lot of dwarven architecture, although I don't actually know the history of Markarth now that I think about it. It must have been built by the Dwemer, though, right? Okay, so we are headed off. We are in, if you don't know Skyrim, we're kind of in the middle of Skyrim. We are heading off way to the west. Because there is a special, special, special thing we will find. Uh, we discover the stables, which means we can teleport there. So you can fast travel to any previously discovered thing. And the easy way to open up the map right off the bat is to basically take the cabbage. <laughs> the cabbage. Take the, uh, take the carriage. Okay, I think I know where this is on the map. I've done this so many times. Although it's hard to tell right now because it's got the gloominess to it. I think it's there. If I remember correctly. We have to be careful because traveling in the wilds is really, really, really bad. Uh, early game on the hardest difficulty. Very, very, very bad indeed. Oh, no, there it is. I was completely off. So you could also place a custom marker like this and then remove it or move it or yada, yada, yada. But yeah, we've gone from the middle of Skyrim all the way to the west. And yeah, you cannot directly fast travel to the holds unlike Oblivion, where right off the bat after loading a new thing, you can go right to the hold. Wait, is this the right one? It has to be. I, I think I say this every single time. Like, is this the right one? Oh, yeah, it is. So, if you remember right, at the start of the game, we took the Thief Stone, which increases all Thief abilities by an extra 15% progress, which I personally think is too high. That's, like, a lot. Uh, I feel like it's just, like, man, that cuts it down by one-fifth. But then again, some skills are so ridiculously hard to level up uh, compared to others, a.k.a. freaking destruction, freaking restoration. Although it might just be because legendary, I, I keep forgetting. People have told me like a million times like what the percentages are and what it's based on, like mana usage and damage and yada, yada, yada. Oh, God. Oh, no, you don't. Nice dodge. Oh, you are strong. Oh, you are strong. You are strong. Okay, got to watch out. Oh, no, you did not. I gotta remember it's gonna do this to me. Okay. Oh, that's scary. Every time that's scary. Okay, let's use some healing. Because I do have that feeling. Okay, so that's what we're looking for right there. So, yeah, anyways. um, Yeah, I mean, 20% is kind of a little OP. But some skills, like, mainly magic stuff takes forever to level up. So, you kind of need it to even, to even, like... Be able to do it whatsoever. But either way, this is the best standing stone in the game. Right here, the Lover Stone. So if you know the signs of Oblivion and, like, Morwen, they turn those into standing stones, which you actually have to find in the wild. And then each one confers a bonus or, of some sort. The Lover Stone, which is here, uh, I guess east of Markarth, the Lover Stone right there, is the best one. And why is that? Well, because those under the side of the Lover Stone always feel a lover's comfort. All skills improve faster. You may only have one sign blessing at a time. So we're going to take that. Thief stone removed. And then lover stone added. And then we have that nice little uh, blue line to tell us 
that we have done that. So let's fast travel to a safe place before something spawns and kills me. Uh, let's go back to Riverwood, because we need to go up here to Bleak Falls Barrow now. Uh, and yeah, so now all skills increase 15% faster, not just the thief set. Which is so so much better, because you're only losing out on 5% for specifically the thief skills. While getting, you know, 15% for everything else. And somebody recently said this, and I didn't even think about this. It's called the Lover Stone, because it's like the same bonus. Well, the Lover Stone always existed, though. But it is similar to the Lover's Comfort bonus, which now we cannot get. It overrides it, from what I understand. Uh, but if we were, like, sleeping with our lover in this game, we would get, like, a bonus to experience as well. But you want that because that's just amazing. So now that stone we grabbed over there, the Thief Stone, is now gone. But there is a way to double up on both. Although that is something that, if we do, will be much later. Anyways, that is where we end. Uh, yeah, I'm really having fun with this new playthrough. I know, uh, like I said, I know that um, I played so much freaking Skyrim on this channel, but... I just wanted to do the stuff, and honestly, it does give me an excuse just to make a new character, and that's fun, especially when it's like a small little playthrough, so. Hope you're enjoying it as well, and if you want to support me, consider becoming a patron over on Patreon, and thank you to my patrons who support what I do, and I will see you all in the next episode. Bye-bye. <gasps>Hey, it's me, GV. Thanks so much for watching this video, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to watch more of me, I'm live on Twitch pretty much every day. Link in the description. If you want to support what I do, Patreon is the best way. Link is in the description. And either way, thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.